This is a Gumai Katana forged from twisted Damascus steel. It has an impressive top quality unique blade pattern. We are all familiar with the five Dama. So what is Gumai? Simply put, Gu stands for copper and Mai stands for layering. Without further ado, the first step in forging and twisting the Dama steel is welding. In the lower left corner of the video, there is a diagram showing the transformation of the Gumai steel blank. The black color represents 1095 steel, and the white color represents 15 to 0 steel. Here, after being dipped in kerosene, the old man sends the steel embryo into the furnace to be heated, and then starts forging on the machine. The purpose of the kerosene is to help the steel blanks fuse better. The masters know this well. Once the fusion of the steel blanks is confirmed, they can be continuously stepped and elongated, with the ultimate goal of flattening them. This is said to be a hydraulic press with a 30-ton punch, and the results of the forging are clearly visible. If you use a hammer, you really don't even have the strength to wipe your ass after hammering. No more. As you can see, Mao started forging the steel embryo from both sides to the center. In fact, the Dama steel embryo molding in the sword forging competition will also go through this step, only that it was directly cut out by the program team. Now the steel embryo has been forged into a square bar. In the next step, Mao will switch to a square mold and keep forging to change the internal structure of the square steel embryo. At this point, the steel embryo has been molded, but it is not visible from the outside. As the forging process continues, the structure of the steel will continue to be deformed until the interior is pressed into a curve. Until the interior is pressed into a curve, then it can be stretched. This is the two pieces of steel after molding, split into two. Before twisting, Mao will press off for right angles to make it more rounded which can prevent the steel embryo from cracking and make it easier to twist and form. With everything ready to go, the next step is the critical one twisting the Duma. Older brother used eight and a half turns twisting method. Do not ask why is eight and a half turns, ask is the master's technique. After the twisting of the two rods is completed, it can be forged into a flat steel embryo. The final internal structure will become the lower left corner of a bit of abstract art master feeling. In order to prevent overforging, old brother prepared a shim. This operation is a bit delicate, until pressed into a centimeter thick. I will be extruded by the mill to get a uniform thickness and perfect steel embryo. This is the first time I've seen a rolling mill make steel blanks. Of course, the final details need to be adjusted by pounding. At this point, the two twisted Dama steel blanks are done. Each one is almost 50 centimeters long. Next, I will add this piece of 1080 for steel and copper to make five steel blanks. This is a katana with a brass blade. You should know that normally the blade pattern is made by overlaying the burnished edge, but today Big Brother will make the blade pattern welded with five pieces of nuclear ladle plus twisted dama and brass. This step can be said to be crucial. After all, copper has a low melting point, but if there is the slightest crack, this bit of copper will basically dissolve away. Five pieces of steel have been initially molded, and the next step is the critical fusion stage. Because the steel embryo is long, so I used the technique of segmented forging. In the next step, Lao will use these two cylindrical molds to forge the steel embryo to form a wave pattern, which will eventually appear on the blade of the knife. Finally, the steel embryo will be extruded in a rolling mill in order to give it a consistent thickness. As for the curvature of the katana, Lao will finish it by hammering. After a lot of hard work by Lao, this piece of five steel embryos was finally molded. Looking at the section, we can see the lines of two pieces of copper. The forging impact will destroy the structure of steel embryo and cause delamination. In order to prevent this five-piece steel embryo from breaking, Lao will shape it by cutting. The next stage is grinding and adjusting the details. Here, Lao also shows the blade he made, which can be said to be a very vivid image. The pigment applied by Lao is more for marking than enchantment, so that the blade shape can be better polished. From here, we can already see the copper wire. After sharpening the blade, Lao begins to adjust the root and assemble the tsuba. At this point, the embryo of a katana has taken initial shape. The copper wire is very distinctive, and the back of the blade has a small bevel. So you can't say that the katana is all set. Next, Lao will repeatedly heat the katana to 900 degrees and then allow it to cool naturally. This heating and cooling process is normalization, and Lao does not intend to quench the blade by cladding and burning it for two reasons. First, cladding the burnished edge of the Dumas steel embryo will soften the back of the knife thus destroying the strength of the Dumas steel embryo. Second, the purpose of adding copper is to replace the edge grain and the copper's ability to melt and dampen. The blade also provides a very good quenching result. Tempering the knife embryo is a critical step. Since Lao's oven was mismatched, his mislevel knife maker friend gave him a wizardly idea of tempering with motor oil. 
The oil tempering was indeed ghostly, and once the tempering was complete, it was time to handle the details of opening the blade. When it comes to katanas, they have to be finely sharpened by hand. Lao isn't about to break such elaborate rules, so let's skip the hours of sharpening and get right to the assembly of the accessory blade set. Unlike steel, which gets harder as it hardens, copper gets softer as it hardens. This little technique is a real piece of work. Once the mold has been shaped, it's time to put the knives on the table. After making the mold, I inserted a silver bar, which was heated repeatedly, and when the silver melted away, it filled the gap without affecting the appearance. While the knife shape Lao intended to use soft steel as the material, and engraved a pattern for finishing. Once the shape was finished, Lao cut a groove in the side of the knife shape and wanted to build a copper wire for decoration. I must say that the old brother's knife forging is quite meticulous. In order to make the sword shape not monotonous, Lao also carved a wave pattern. This piece of basswood is the material for the hilt and horn of the katana. After cutting it in half, I ground out the grooves for the hilt and applied glue to assemble it. The hilt is relatively plain. These are the edges of the knife-shaped soft steel material from earlier. Next, Lao will use this to make a rounded end to wrap the knife handle. At this point, the knife handle is complete. The material utilization can be said to be 99%. Finally, I will finish wrapping the hilt with pearl fish skin. This is an indispensable part of the traditional samurai hilt. Unfortunately, after the wrapping was completed, Lao felt that the center white wrap was a bit off. Despite the fact that the rope wrapping had already begun, he still planned to remove it. There was no way around it. He was an obsessive compulsive master who just couldn't stand flaws in his work. After sanding and clearing the glue, Lao directly cut the fish skin wrapping. In order to make the work more exquisite, he boiled it in salt water to make it black. After assembling the accessories, it is time to wrap the rope to wrap the handle. Of course, the most crucial thing about the five damas is the acid dip. If the unique pattern is not revealed, then the katana is as good as missing its soul. While the blade was being acid dipped, Lao started making the scabbard. While a layer of felt was attached to the center to protect the blade, that's a bit to consider it. Steel plain and unadorned, the details were polished and adjusted, and finally black lacquer was used as the color scheme for the hilt. This is how a top quality Dama 5 piece katana takes shape. The handle is quite textured not to mention the shape of the blade. Of course, the best part has to be the fact that this katana has a pattern copper linear blade pattern. Very artistic indeed. Seven would be happy to see this pattern with the katana in place. I decided to try it out myself, although he is not as handsome as Seven. But for the sake of the handsome sword, I will let it go. Finally, let's end with a tribute to Brother Huachan. See you in the next installment of the Four Sword Competition.